What I want to do is run through a location kit right now. This is a kit that I put together that I take with me whenever I go on location. The reason being is I don't want to intrude too much on the restaurant. There's going to be stuff that I want to have on hand when I'm styling the food. And keep in mind, I'm working with the chef to get them to you know, give me a plate that's really presentable to the lens. But I guarantee you, I'm going to go in and I'm going to futz. I'm going to noodle. I'm going to make some adjustments. So. One, I don't want them to feel bad that I'm going in and I'm kind of, and I, won't, I won't say redoing, um, enhancing what they're doing. And two, I don't want to intrude. I don't want to constantly say, hey, I need a towel, I need Windex, I need this, that, or the other thing. So I put together a kit that's really concise. It's got everything I need and then some in there, and I just kind of go for it. So what I did is I went down to the hardware store, and I got your basic tool kit. It's a multi-level tool kit that will click apart. They're like 20 bucks. They've got a roller on the bottom so you can easily cart it around if it gets heavy. It's a very simple thing to do. Let's take a look at what's inside on the very top. So this thing opens up and I just keep a few things on the inside. There's some cotton balls, there's electric adapters on the odd chance that I don't have a three prong somewhere. Uh, I keep little things like pens, wire ties, twisties, that kind of stuff in here. Q-tips. I don't go anywhere on location without a Q-tip. When you're cleaning a plate, this is absolutely essential. So I always have a pile of those. I've got washers, and sometimes I just need to prop something up a little bit. I can, there can be a piece of food that just needs to be lifted towards the camera. You stack a couple of these on top of each other, put them under the food, and it'll bring it up towards the camera to give you the right perspective. So it's little simple things like that that can make a big difference. I also want to make sure that I've got extra modeling lights. So I always keep a couple model lights in my kit so that if something burns out, or if a light kind of goes down hard and it pops the filament, I've got a spare with me and I don't have to think about it. I know I can go right to my kit and get it. Uh, wire, sometimes I just need wire to rig something. You want to pull something off to the side a little bit. Keep in mind, I think one of the most important things about being a good photographer is knowing how to think abstractly and kind of rig things. You have to have almost that kind of Rube Goldberg mind where you just have to think of, okay, how can I make this thing work? So sometimes you need things like wire, washers, that kind of stuff. This kit is indispensable. Lift up on the inside and I can put a bunch of stuff in there. I always take rags with me. I don't want to rely on the restaurant, again, I don't want to ask them, like, hey, can I borrow a rag? There's times where I just need to clean something up. A table might be a little bit dirty. I've spilled something. They've spilled something. If I can quickly just go and grab the rags, it's awesome. I always have Windex with me because sometimes plates get dirty. Um, sauces can get smeared. Stuff can get spilled. So I dip a Q-tip into this, and then I can clean up the plate and keep it nice. I have a couple extra bottles, too, just in case there's other stuff that I want to take. I always have water. If I want to kind of moisten the food, if it's looking a little bit dry and I just want to give it some moisture, I bring water. This is filtered water that I, that I took from the studio. It's clean. It's good. I change it every time I go out. I also bring things like oil. Sometimes I want to give food a little bit of a glisten, a little bit of a pop, particularly if it's something like a burger or a steak. I've noticed that sometimes when chefs bring me burgers or steaks, they're dry. They just, they just don't have that juicy look. So I paint a little bit of oil on it. It makes a huge difference. Um, you never know what you're going to need to measure out. I just kind of bring stuff like this, a little beaker, in case I want one, another container to pour stuff into. If I, if I need to measure something, I've got it with me. Again, extra bottles in case I want to use it to drizzle something on. I've got it. Usually chefs have this kind of stuff in the kitchen, but sometimes I just don't want to ask. I want to be able to keep moving and doing my thing. And then I've also got a spray bottle. If I want to put some water in here and mist something like a salad, if I've got a bunch of vegetables and I want to keep them looking fresh and crisp, I'll fill this with, with cool water, the filtered water, and I'll go ahead and I'll spray that down. It just gives it a nice little mist and everything's cool that way. And then <clears throat> I also carry mineral oil with me. As well as the, the vegetable oil, I want to have mineral oil. It's just a good, clear oil that works. Vegetable oil tends to be yellow in color, and I don't necessarily want to impart that yellow color in the food. So mineral oil is good, it's neutral, it gives no color whatsoever. Same with olive oil. Olive oil is nice, but again, again it gives a green cast. And I also bring glycerin for the same reason. It's clear, it's neutral, it's thick, 
And if I want something to look like it's got droplets on it, like if I want some water to look like it's almost kind of running a little bit, I can use glycerin, which is nice and thick. So these are all things that I want to have with me just to help me give effect if I so choose it. So that's it for the top of the kit for the most part. We've got one more tray that's going to go in here that we're going to fill up. And we had quite a few things in there. Paint brushes. Remember I use these to kind of knock crumbs and things out of the way, but also if I need to paint the oil on or the, or the water, I use my, my paint brushes right here. Chopsticks. These are great. When you're getting in tight on a set, you need to move things around. You don't have a lot of room. This can just kind of work very well. Um, emery boards. Yeah, that's a weird thing to have, but you never know. Sometimes things just need to be cleaned up a little bit. You need to file them down or you can snap them and they work really well. Just, just putting a little wedge under something. So I've always got these things with me too. A level. I always have a level with me anyway. No matter where I go as a photographer, I want to know that my surface is level. A lot of times, in fact, think about how many times you go into a restaurant and you get the wobbly table and it's got a sugar packing under the foot and it's wobbling and driving you crazy. If I go in and I'm starting to shoot on a table and it's tilted, the liquid is tilted, stuff might run, so I want to know that the, that the table is absolutely level, so I bring that guy with me as well. And while we're talking about level, this is another great tool that all photographers should have. It's an angle finder. I use this constantly and the reason I do is because I want to mimic my shot if I have to for a client again in the future. So if I'm doing something for the, for the client and there might be an extension of that job at some point and I need to get back to that same setup, I will measure my camera height, I will measure my camera distance from the subject and I'll also measure the l angle of the camera by putting this on the barrel of the lens and it can tell me at what degree the camera is pointed up or down. This is an indispensable tool if you want to get back and repeat something. It's really, really hard to repeat something you've done before. So take all measurements that you possibly can if you think you're going to do it. Like I said, I, I do this all the time with a lot of my food clients. They do extensions of their brands. So we want to go back and add to their library of images. And we do that by repeating the exact same set over and over again, which means all those measurements have to be really accurate. All right, so this goes in there as well. Scissors. Who can be without scissors? I bring big scissors. I bring small scissors. I even have some that are a little bit more accurate and a little bit tighter because you definitely need those. Tweezers. You cannot be a food photographer and not have tweezers. These things should be like everywhere. You should have 45 of them around your studio. You definitely need to have them on location. Forceps. These are actually really great. You can get these at a medical supply store. You can use them for bigger food or if you have to get something that's like in a glass, if you need to kind of adjust ice or something like that, this is the way to go because it gives you much better reach. It's nice. fits right in your kit. Um, white gloves. So <clears throat> I use white gloves quite a bit. There are two different kinds. This is the kind that you get from the camera supply store, the typical old dark and white glove. In fact, you can tell this one's a little bit dingy and been, been around. This is more like a clown glove. It drives me crazy because they're so big on my hands. They just kind of, I'm almost swimming in them, but you got to have them. The other thing that you can do is you can get manicure gloves, which these things are designed that if your hands are chapped or whatever, you can, you know, put lotion on them, put these gloves on and sleep in them. And then you wake up in the morning, and you've got soft, supple hands. They also work perfectly when you're on set and you don't want to get fingerprints on glassware, on silverware, on plates. You can also put these on and then polish the silverware so you get fingerprints off of it and put it into place. It's a really good thing to have. Eyedroppers, again, I might want to add a little bit of moisture, a little bit of, you know, some sort of condensation to a part of the meal. So I have eyedroppers, so if I want to dip into the glycerin or into the water and add that element to it, I can do so. It's a very simple thing to have. This is called stickum. Um, if you're a photographer, you probably know what this is and you can tell that I use this a lot. Stickum is actually designed for candles and what you do with it is you dip the bottom of your candle in it and then when you stick it into your candelabra, it won't fall all over. It happens to work great for sticking a bunch of stuff that you need on set to actually stick. This stuff is indispensable as well. I highly recommend you get it. It's like two bucks or something. Actually, three dollars from Spicers. Blue Goo is phenomenal. It's made by DAP. I l absolutely love this stuff. I live on it. It's just amazing. It's really sticky. It allows you to stick anything together for the most part. Uh, I use it all the time. If I've got a set weight or some sort of a prop where I need to attach a card to it, I can use the Blue Goo to just stick to the card, to stick to the weight so it can kick in the light where I want it. There are a thousand applications for this and it's indispensable. There are other varieties of it that are less sticky and I keep those on hand as well just in case I want them. 
They're not as good as blue goo, but sometimes blue goo is actually too sticky. And this stuff actually activates. The more you, you work it, the more you heat it up, it gets stickier and stickier. Uh, on a hot summer day, it can be really sticky. And then the last thing I do is I bring something like black shoe polish, and I usually bring brown as well, just in case I go on location and a table has a scratch in it and I, I you know, want to cover it up a little bit. I can rub a little black shoe polish in it. If there's a chip out of something, I can usually cover it up a bit with the black shoe polish and it saves me some time in post-production. Just a little good thing to have. You might never dip into this, but this is something that I always like to have on hand. So this tray goes in the top and you can see how nice and concise this is. Everything goes in there. Oh, and I never go anywhere without a can of air. This is another thing you absolutely have to have so you can kind of clear your set off and just get it going. So this all fits in here in the top, gets locked in, nice and easy. I've got one more little compartment that goes in the front here and I've got quite a few little tiny things that I keep in this, in this container. I've got thumbtacks, I've got more washers, I've got little tiny clamps, I've got clothespins, more wire just in case, paper clips, sometimes you need to bend something around and just kind of get something in there, a couple different kinds of bindery clips, and some dark wire. And the last thing I have in here is a series of different types of syringes. These syringes are good for, again, liquids, if you want gravies or sauces or you want to add a little bit of moisture somewhere and you want to do it in a very concise, precise way, you can use these syringes and they're really simple. So if you think about how many things I've got in here, I've got a ton of stuff and it all fits down into this entire kit, nice and compact right there. Oh yeah, you know what? I also bring this. This is kind of a smart thing to bring. It's just a wad of trash bags. Very simple. I don't want to rely on the restaurant. Sometimes you can be kind of stuck out in a corner or you can be somewhere where there is stuff going on and you want to have something you know, where you can, you can dump stuff. Or you want to protect something and it's good to have a little bit of plastic. So I bring some trash bags. They're just wadded up with a little bit of twist tie. Okay, this is one of the last tubs that I have and I've just got a few set weights in here. Again, I might want to prop something up. I might want to have a little bit of a set weight where I put a, a silver card or a white card kicking a little bit light of light in. If I have this on hand, I don't have to ask anybody for something else. I've got it right here. It's nice and concise. Wire ties, never know. You just might need to kind of bind something up or use it to clamp something or manage all the cords that you have because again, we have a lot of stuff. Uh, thread, a little bit of cinnamon foil. I use that just in case. If I don't have a lens hood, if I'm getting lens flare, I can wrap this around the lens and I can additionally shade it. Uh, if I need this somewhere, I've got it. And then last but not least, I just have a little tiny ruler. Uh, sometimes I want to take some measurements of things on the set. Again, taking notes so I can repeat things. And that's right there. Just throw it in your bag, it's no big deal. So I've got all this stuff together and the last component is the very bottom of the kit. So this is the component where the wheels are. It's the deepest component and you can throw a bunch of stuff in here. At the very bottom I've got clamps because I want to have a variety of clamps. I've got large ponies, I've got medium ponies and I've got small ponies. Just in case I need them they're there. I've got more foil, this time it's silver in case I want to roll that out. I've got a bunch of silver cards and then this thing is really cool. Um, a former assistant of mine did this for me a long time ago and this has proved to be one of the most indispensable tools that I have. It's an old TV antenna. So go down to the junk store or the junkyard or if you've got some of these laying around your basement. Drill a piece of wood, take the antenna, stick it in there and now you can use this. This is a great little thing. You can hold anything. You can adjust it. If I need to prop up a card and stick it in there, boom. I just did it with absolutely no effort whatsoever. Cost nothing. Scrap. I have these everywhere. I have this in both my St. Louis studio, my Chicago studio. I use them on sets constantly and I also use them on location all the time. And that's it. That's my location kit. I'm going to click it all together and I can hit the road with it. Okay, here's my completed kit. Nice and concise. Snaps together. I mean, look, think of how much stuff I have in this. There is a ton of stuff, and it kind of covers me for anything. I'm really prepared for anything I need to do right with this kit. Now that we've got my styling and kind of rigging kit all together, we can grab the rest of our equipment, our cameras, and our computers, and we can go ahead and we can head down to the restaurant.